Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Ooh, look at chills, Nestle, Sir, Spence, Fassels. I'm a useful idiot, and uh, this morning we're going to talk about Egypt again, a little update, because uh, things are uh, moving along dramatically with uh, a lot more wounded and dead as the uh, Egyptian military continues to crack down on the Muslim Brotherhood. And they also kept Morsi in detention and uh, completely out of contact with his family and everyone else uh, since then, and are, are going to press charges of uh, murder of guards. Uh, apparently he broke out of jail when the uh, Arab Spring hit, and some uh, guards were killed. So they're going to press charges against him for that, as well as uh, uh, collaborating with uh, Hamas in uh, Palestine. So, uh, so anyway, uh, this crackdown is... Uh, very, very, very dramatic, and um, I, I already discussed pretty much all of these issues in my last video about Egypt, and I'll attach that below. And that was the fact that I was rather shocked that there was such a, an a, immense and a wide crackdown on the Muslim Brotherhood, especially so violently. And like I say, that continues now. We have uh, over 5,000 wounded and 120 killed, uh, somewhere between 120 and 200 killed in the in the last week or so of violence, and the, uh, the uh, military is being uh, merciless. But uh, the fact is, I, I would say that they have to be. And the reason why I say that is because here we have another country, Egypt, um, that has had a uh, strong man in power for decades. And uh, of course, we had Nasser, we had Sadat, we had Mubarak. Um, all of these figures were a strong men in the tradition of authoritarian strong men across the Middle East. And it is that uh, figure and that uh, power that holds the sectarian um, violence in check. And in every country, one after another, when we remove that authoritarian uh, power, the vacuum is filled by sectarian violence and it's unleashed. We've seen that in country after country after country. I look at Iraq now when I, when I think of uh, Egypt, because Iraq is another example of a very uh, sectarian-leaning country of the thriving middle class with an authoritarian strongman that kept uh, ethnic rivalry somewhat in check. And, uh, and even though Saddam Hussein has now been replaced by uh, another authoritarian strongman, Maliki, um, the fact is the, the, uh, the Pandora's box has already been opened, and all the sectarian violence is unleashed. We're seeing the results of that in Iraq. And uh, unfortunately, I'm getting the picture that things could be very much like that in Egypt as well. Um, even though the military is back in place, um, the uh, sectarian violence in the Pandora's box has been opened, and uh, this will be continuing, particularly since uh, they've been cracking down so harshly on the Muslim Brotherhood. And... Um, this can only result in uh, further backlashes and, and probably end up drawing jihadis from around the region, much like every other hot spot um, in the Middle East. And um, we could find a, a long uh, war of attrition between the Muslim Brotherhood, the jihadis, and the Egyptian military. Unfortunately, that's the, the scenario I see now. And um, the... Uh, other thing I want to bring up in this video, as long as we're uh, discussing uh, the Muslim Brotherhood in such detail, is actually a look back at the history of the Muslim Brotherhood a little bit, because uh, I'm not sure if everybody's uh, familiar with all the details. And even though it's commonly available, let's, let's look at the uh, trajectory of the Muslim Brotherhood and how they've arrived at this place in Egypt where they are now. They were founded in 1928 um, in, a, in a move to push Egypt towards Islamic law. Uh, with the sights set on British imperial rule ending. And uh, they were primarily an educational and charitable group and a uh, move towards the political. And that's something they, they have in common with a lot of uh, other misunderstood uh, Middle Eastern groups, uh, Hezbollah being an example, even though Hezbollah has a, an armed uh, paramilitary that's attached to it, and they also have a political movement um, they are mostly known in Lebanon for their educational charitable work, and that's how they build up their groundwork. 
So, uh, so the Muslim Brotherhood was founded in 1928, and by the 1930s, they're actually collaborating with the Nazis a little bit against the British in the in, the, in Egypt in the 1930s, and then. Uh, by 19, November 1948, after numerous bombings and assassinations, the Prime Minister ordered the dissolution of the Brotherhood, the Muslim Brotherhood, and 32 of its leaders were arrested. So we're, we, we see this pattern over and over and over again. And, um, so you, you see this event in November 1948. It sounds uh, very similar to what we're finding now, the Prime Minister ordering the dissolution of the Muslim Brotherhood. But of course, it just went further underground. And uh, incidentally, by December of 1948, the next month, that very same prime minister was assassinated by a Muslim Brotherhood member. And, uh, and then the month after that, in January 1949, Albana, who was the founder of the Muslim Brotherhood back in 1928, was assassinated by government agents. So that set the template. Uh, that was only 60, 60 some odd years ago. In uh, 1952, the Muslim Brotherhood was accused of arsons that destroyed over 750 buildings in downtown Cairo. This was mostly the district that uh, was visited by Westerners and actually had gotten rather decadent with uh, casinos and hotels. And, and uh, the burning down of that district actually ended the liberal progressive cosmopolitan Egypt, uh, a society similar to what we found in Lebanon around the same era, kind of a Cuba of the Middle East, where Westerners went to frolic. And, uh, and then later on that same year, 1952, the monarchy was overthrown by a military coup. And the military coup was supported by the Muslim Brotherhood, but once the military got in power, they disenfranchised the Muslim Brotherhood, something else that also sounds vaguely familiar. Then in 1954, the Muslim Brotherhood was blamed for the assassination attempt on Prime Minister Gamal Nasser, and uh, so Nasser, again, abolished the Muslim Brotherhood and imprisoned and punished thousands of its members. And uh, in the 1960s, there was, there was even uh, public hangings of various Muslim Brotherhood members who uh, set up a coup plot. And then, uh, jumping ahead to 1970, Anwar Sadat became president and gradually eased the oppression on the Muslim Brotherhood organization. Uh, so they were tolerated, but not legalized. And then uh, in 1979, uh, Sadat signed a peace agreement with Israel that we're all familiar with now. And within two years, Sadat was assassinated uh, with involvement of uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, or so it is said. So uh, you yeah, have this adversarial uh, relationship between uh, the uh, military and the Muslim Brotherhood and the secular religious elements in Egypt, Egypt going back uh, <clears throat> 50, 60 some odd years, if not longer. And, uh, and then in the 1970s, there were student Islamic riots as well, and uh, something we see in common with much of the Middle East of that era. So by the 1980s, Mubarak is in power and uh, once again has this adversarial relationship with the Muslim Brotherhood. And in 1992, there was mass arrests and harassment of the Muslim Brotherhood. And uh, Muslim Brotherhood candidates had always made strong showings um, in the elections because of their social programs. But uh, they always had to operate um, as independents. And um, in 2015, Muslim Brotherhood deputies were, elect were elected to the parliament. Uh, so this set up the uh, uh, re-entry into politics of the Muslim Brotherhood that we see in our own era. And by uh, 2005, there was a pro-democracy movement uh, with the government crackdown and thousands arrested. And uh, this is when the Muslim Brotherhood started uh, basically working with the secular elements in uh, in Egypt in order to press for democratic reform in Egypt. And of course, that re uh, resulted in uh, uh, the Arab Spring, as we call it. And uh, in 2006, a lot of uh, Muslim Brotherhood militant cells were formed. And uh, this is the point where the Muslim Brotherhood is infiltrated by Western influences. And you can look back through the history that I just talked about with the Muslim Brotherhood and see plenty of opportunities uh, for the West to work with the Muslim Brotherhood. Certainly the uh, the West would have been interested in taking down some of these Egyptian governments and, um, and also just wreaking havoc and destabilizing Egypt um, in, in 
moves to get uh, American puppets in place. And uh, a lot of these gyrations ended up uh, uh, putting American puppets in place, as it turns out. But in 2006, that's when uh, Muslim Brotherhood militant cells started being formed. As, uh, as I say, before they had always been more of an educational, charitable political group, and they started uh, forming militant cells. And uh, how about that? Uh, just a couple of years previous to the so-called Arab Spring. So the uh, U.S. was integral in training these student groups and radicalize them in order to uh, uh, affect change in Egypt. And uh, then in 2008, there was another huge crackdown in the Muslim Brotherhood, and uh, they were barred from all elections. And that's why it's such a big deal that by 2011, when the Arab Spring happened, uh, they found uh, the Muslim Brotherhood finally, after all of those years, uh, fully legalized, and then uh, to find themselves not only uh, recognized and legalized, but then to find themselves a political power, only to have it taken away so very quickly and now oppressed, as they uh, always have been um, since going back all the way to 1928. So, uh, so this will, for that reason, uh, that's uh, another reason historically why I suggest that this uh, violence will continue unabated because, uh, like I say, this Pandora's box has been open. We have a huge, long history of the clash between the Egyptian military and the Muslim Brotherhood. And uh, this will be another rallying cry for jihadis around the region. And that, uh, that's just how I look at it. I could be wrong. But uh, I, I, I think that uh, there will be continued violence, certainly not on the level necessarily of, of Iraq, um, because we have a long tradition of the military being in power there and having the mechanisms to control the country. And, uh, they were never out of power, so those all a lot of that uh, system is still in place, and they will be able to utilize it. But nonetheless, uh, I think uh, uh, continued violence is uh, the wave of the future for Egypt, as far as uh, the near future goes. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too?